Okay, in this video I want to discuss exactly why our teeth are our facial attractiveness. So our teeth have a huge influence on what makes our facial form and thus if you have good teeth you're generally going to be attractive and that means not that, that you artificially create good teeth because anyone can go to the dentist and get a good smile, a good aesthetic smile, however the thing is they're not changing the underlying facial form that developed that smile in the first place. So if you see people with naturally good teeth, they're generally going to have hyper attractive faces. Not always, but it's a good rule because the teeth have a huge influence on our facial form. So I've got a few examples here. I'm going to show you exactly why that is. And I know these are some of the examples that I've used in the past but it's hard to think of fresh faces and these are generically good looking faces so I assume that they have good smiles. Now the first thing we want to look at is the incisors and they are these teeth here. These are the incisors typically used for like ripping apart in steak and stuff like that. Now the significance of the incisors is that they have a really strong correlation in research to your interalar width or the width of your nose and in this obviously he is smiling so the nose width increases slightly but and but the teeth width will not increase so you can assume that the the inter canine width is pretty congruent to the nose width and it's not always one to one exactly obviously but it's pretty close and that's largely significant because imagine if you had a unideal bite and there was something wrong with your canines or they developed in some odd fashion where they were too spread out or too narrowed your nose would either be too narrow in form or too wide sometimes and additionally it's, these are not the best photos for okay this is a better one so additionally the canines so we, we, we established that the canines have a strong correlation to the interhalar width. You can see the same thing for Ian Summerall here. And on top of that, there has been research indicating that the interhalar width, or the width of the nose, has strong ties to the interpupillary distance. And this is just common sense because usually people, people's nose, excuse me, fits within their eyes. So the nose will not really extend to the pupils here. It'll be it will be somewhere within this area anywhere from here to here and if it's all the way out here that's an extremely wide nose but usually it will be between the inner canthal corners but anywhere between there is normal either way so there's a strong correlation between the nose width and the interpupillary distance now if your canines are insufficient or overly wide apart by some type of malocclusion your eye spacing is going to be affected. Now eye spacing has a huge genetic component, so I'm not saying that you have bad eye spacing that means your your teeth developed improperly. I'm saying that the formation of your teeth is strongly correlated to your eye spacing as well. And some people genetically just have different teeth. Not everyone has the same type of teeth, even if it's ideal. So you can see Henry's teeth looks different from uh, these teeth as well, even though they all have quite good teeth. Now you could obviously say that these are not good teeth, but these are 99th percentile teeth. Especially if they are natural, the form of the teeth is largely ideal. Now obviously his teeth have some wear, which means that they've been used quite a bit, obviously. But the general aesthetic form of his teeth are good. So you can see the canines are about the same length as the central incisors here. And that is ideal. They should be about the same length. Although these central incisors should be ever so slightly longer, which they are. And there's no excessive wear on his teeth. So these are very good teeth. Now let's actually touch on malocclusion quickly before we go back to that. So I'll drag a photo here. And this is kind of an unsightly photo, but especially if you're not used to looking at whatever 
teeth. Even I don't really look at teeth that much, but I'm familiar with malocclusion. So this is a good diagram. And there's essentially three different types of malocclusions. So this was a class one. Class one, and this is a class three and a class two. So this is called an overbite, and this would be an underbite, which, pe which people are usually familiar with. And in the overbite, the front teeth, or the maxillary teeth, the upper arch, come forward. You can see the gap here. The space, it, it's 3D, so you're not really going to be able to see it from a front view, but you can still see that the teeth are more ahead of the, ba of the bottom teeth. Whereas in the class one, this is called a normal occlusion. In the normal occlusion, the teeth are normally aligned. So in a normal occlusion, the upper teeth should slightly go over the bottom teeth. And so this would be ideal. This is ideal. Although, well, this would be an ideal bite, although this is not a good example because like the teeth are not even developed, so it doesn't look that good. But this would be an ideal bite in general. And what that is, is that the lower central incisors, and I apologize if this is complex, but bear with me. It's not that relevant, but I do want to establish this before we go into the other stuff. So the lower central incisors, which are these, they should be shown when you bite. So when you bite down, you should be able to see at least 50% of your lower central incisors, if not up to 70%. So that is ideal. And if you can't see your lower central incisors, it, it means that the teeth over here and in general, they have too much wear. So they've been broken down so much that the teeth just overlap. So you can see in this photo, you can barely see about 20% of the lower central incisors. And this is not ideal. And this, what this will do is, so I'll demonstrate this in Photoshop. Imagine that your teeth support your jaw. So if your teeth break down or wear down from natural use, this will happen to your, to your jaw height. It'll go like this, although it'll be from your teeth. So your jaw will shorten and a shorter jaw makes the face look older because the lower third height reduces and commonly older people do not have their teeth. They have dentures or because they just don't take care of their teeth or some other reasons. So yeah, you can see the stark difference having a normal lower third, a normal, this is a normal class one. So Henry Cavill has a normal class one dental occlusion with no no overbite or overjet or anything unideal really. So that is exactly why his facial form is that good. If he didn't have that, his lower third would be too short is what I'm saying, or his eyes would be too close together, or his nose would be too small, or etc. Just something would look off. His face would look too short. And in this class three occlusion, you can see that the lower teeth come over the upper teeth. And this can cause a whole slew of issues. So this middle section here shows a normal bite where the teeth don't overlap too much. This shows a short bite where it, this is actually called an overbite, whereas the class two is called overjet when the teeth come forward, but regardless. And these two, if you have these, it'll make your jaw look unideal and it'll affect more than just your jaw's facial form. It'll affect the whole other, just the general shape of the mid face entirely. Really anything below your eyes will look unideal. And here, these are different types of bites as well. This is called an open bite. And if you have an open bite, the opposite thing will happen, obviously, where your jaw will look too large and your teeth will not, it'll be hard to close your lips, basically. So this, this gets quite complex, but my main point is that your teeth have a huge influence on your facial harmony. You can see that deviating too much from normal makes your jaw too large, it makes it too long, too short, too steep, etc. There's just a, a whole slew of issues that could happen. 
if your teeth are not ideal. So the first thing I would recommend to people is to get their teeth corrected as much as possible. It's not always going to be possible to get teeth like this. And even if you do, they won't really, it won't correct your facial form, but if you can correct your jaws, okay, I should rephrase. The first thing you should do is correct your dental occlusion, not your teeth, because you can just get, uh, what is that called? Like, I mean, you could theoretically get dentures or the stuff where people shave down their teeth and get new. I forget what it's called, but it's silly. So theoretically, you could get good looking teeth, but that won't fix your jaws structure. So what you should try to do is fix your malocclusion if you have it, and that will drastically improve your facial appearance. It won't fix everything, especially as you've developed your nose and such have developed in accordance with it, but it will help you a lot. Now let's go back to some of these examples. So in Margot's case here, her canines are here. Her face is kind of at an angle, so it's not going to be entirely accurate, but even her nose width is roughly the same as this distance here. Yeah, it's, and this applies to most people. And if you have wide or sufficiently wide incisors, your interpupillary distance will be normal and it won't look too close together or too far apart. So that is an important thing to note. And obviously, the most attractive faces will not have jaws that are too short or too long. And that's the case with all of these people here. So in Ian's case, I actually think he does have very good teeth as well. Obviously, not every person is going to have perfect, perfect teeth because we live in a realistic world and you have to use your teeth to eat, so they're not just going to look like like a statue or something to, to just marvel over. They're actually functional tools, but if you take care of them, they're going to be good-looking functional tools. And yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to touch on, just showing the significance of the teeth relative to the eyes spacing, the nose width, the jaw structure, and the jaw formation. And actually, let me see if I can get a side profile. Malocclusion. So, if you have a malocclusion in the side profile, what will that look like? And you can see this uh, girl here. She had a class 3 uh, underbite, and so her lower jaw came too forward. And if you correct that, the face profile looks more pleasant. But it doesn't really fix the mid-face deficiency that formed in the first place. So that is, that is something to note. It won't completely change your facial form because that's how you've developed your whole life until that point. Especially if you get intervention at 50 or 40 years old. You're, you're going to look better, but it won't be. Don't expect massive changes. And I'm trying to find an example of a shorter jaw. Okay, so this guy seemed to have a normal occlusion where his upper teeth don't overlap his lower substantially, but he did have a... Oh, so he does have a slight open bite. So his teeth should overlap slightly more, maybe like 10% more. Let me actually take a look at this. Okay, I'll just screenshot it. And maybe one more example. This is also an open bite. You can just see the, the jaw is too lengthened and the teeth don't overlap sufficiently. It's kind of hard to find a closed bite example because usually that happens either from a lack of jaw support or or the teeth get worn down from bruxism which is overly clenching your teeth another open bite example and you can just see that his jaw is too lengthened and generally just the whole jaw formation will look unideal okay let's just finish this video off with this example so in this guy's case he has 
I guess it would be classified as an open bite. That's at least what the study said, or his case study. But it doesn't seem that bad. Like, he still has sufficient overlap here. And overall, his teeth look good. So I don't know if he had dental work beforehand. Um, he has too gummy of a smile, so that could be another issue. If you have too much hypermobility above the gums, it, it just looks unpleasant first of all, but he obviously has some kind of lip incompetence, which means that the lips don't meet. They just look a little bit squiggly or on the line, disharmonious. And this usually occurs from not being able to close your jaw properly. So he does have an open bite. So his, and another thing you want to touch on this whole bunch of things. So this mental region here, this is called the mental crease. And mental just refers to the chin. And this creasing here indicates that the muscle. Okay, so <laughs> explaining this just you have to go into too many tangential points to explain one thing. So this muscle here is called the mentalis muscle. And if you can't close your jaw, imagine that you have to keep using this muscle to lift the chin up, and it becomes overworked and it looks Unesthetic. It's not a very pleasing muscle to have overdeveloped. And that's his case here. And this is actually very common. And then his lips, like I said, they don't close properly, so there's an there's a unideal seal. Imagine if something was shut properly, a seal would be like a straight line, it would be enclosed. But if it didn't, it would be like a little bit wonky. And we can also do some subtle assessments in his side profile. So we can see that his facial flatness is pretty ideal at 170 degrees and his full facial flatness or is slightly low. So it's normal but at 135 degrees it should be about 137.5 and that is this assessment here. And I think it would be from his I'm not sure what I would do to correct that because check some other assessments here. So his nasofacial angle is ideal at 33.5 between 30 and 36 degrees. And oh, just did that. His mental angle here is also ideal at 125.5. His nose doesn't seem overly protrusive. I think that his chin, yeah, his chin could come slightly more forward. And let's go into Photoshop slightly. So what could happen to make his assessment ideal is that his chin could come slightly more forward in his lower jaw. But the thing is that won't correct his underlying issue. And his issue is not that his face is too round or flat. His issue is his jaw structure back here and his mandibular mandibular plane angle is too high, which means that his jaw is too downward grown. Ideally, you'd have a longer ramus, or the ramus is the back portion of the jaw, and your mandible or lower jaw would not compensate by dropping down. So your ramus would be longer, and then your jaw, lower jaw would be flatter. And that would look like this in the front profile. And I do this for a lot of people in my face analysis services. So if you'd like to order that, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like in the end of this video. And the links are in the video description. So if you lower the jaw, it looks like this, which looks better. You can see the gonion or the back point of the jaw here is lowered. So that that was his main issue is that his jaw structure was not ideal. Not that his face was misaligned. He had pretty good facial alignment. And this doesn't look perfect, but it looks better than before. His jaw was a lot weaker beforehand. And actually, if you had better facial form like this, from the start, your eyes would kind of reflect that. And he Usually, having bad facial structure associ is associated with poor eye structure. And you can see his eyes are droopy. And his periorbital region, or the region underneath his eyes, is also uh, lacking support. So you can see that the, if we take a 
perpendicular line here. He has a pretty neutral orbital vector, so it's not bad by any means, but he just doesn't have a lot of bone support in this region, and his mid-face region is kind of flat and sunken, which is a common trait among aging people, so it's not necessarily a beautiful trait. And yeah, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Please suggest any other general video topics you'd like to see. And until the next time, if you'd like to order a face analysis, this is what it looks like on my website. And this is an example on the website. It's very lengthy, so 